use this for a down payment on a house. A house? Me? Oh, hey. Curtis, that's wonderful. Oh, look at the That's pictures. the smartest move you ever made, Bill. Well, thank you. Where's it located, Curtis? 753 Clemens Street. 753 Clemens? Mm -hmm. Well, old Jasper lives on Clemens. Means when you walk into a house and you see a young man and a young lady alone, you are supposed to know enough to turn around and walk back out. I did walk back out. Yeah, but you walked back in. Because you asked me back in. It shows I ain't no damn genius either. <laughs> Curtis, the homeowner of today has got to have protection. Mm -hmm. I mean, up north, y'all use a lot of guard dogs, but folks in these parts use a lot of guinea hens. <laughs> guinea hens? You bet. Guinea hens make a lot of noise because they hate everybody. They make one of the world's greatest watchbirds. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Harley, but I have an idea who did it. My new next-door neighbor. Curtis, please don't jump to conclusions. Now, I know the NAACP's never gonna vote Jasper their man of the year, but he'd never do a thing like that. Mm. Cloris, Cloris, this lab report on the red paint from Baker's door just ain't worth a pile of beans. Says on here they sell a thousand cans of this kind of paint every month. Well, Roy, you see, this is the average color used by the average bigot. <laughs> Well, see if you can find out what average bigot bought this one. I want you to give me a list of everybody that lives in that neighborhood. I want to know everything that went on. I mean, any unusual noises. I mean anything. If a tomcat got lucky that night, I want to know about it. <laughs> Boris, where's Jasper? Oh, no. I got him first. Now, y'all, wait a minute. Jasper ain't all that bad. I mean, just last Tuesday, there's a little old black lady trying to get up on the bus. Jasper stopped his squad car, got out, and helped her up on the bus and walked her all the way to the back. <laughs> Gee, that was really nice of him. Did he rub her head for good luck, too? <laughs> That's just superstition. It don't really work. <laughs> Neither do you. Now, will you get busy? Hi, Jasper. Hey, Baker, I got a phone to pick with you. Jasper Jr. and I was walking by your house this morning and we saw this horrible word painted on it in big red letters. Now, why don't you just paint it out? I mean, it's an eyesore for the entire neighborhood. I'd rather leave it. Baker, we all know you're there. You don't have to advertise. <laughs> well, Jasper, what was that neighborhood meeting about at your place the other night? To decide what color paint to use on my door? Hey. I don't need no can of paint to let you know I don't like you living in my neighborhood. Well, look, you keep talking like that sucker, and you ain't gonna be living there much longer now. Oh, yeah? yeah. You thank you for the hot stuff. Hey, man, hold, hold, hold it now. You're both acting like children. Anybody causes any bodily harm around here, it's gonna be me. Now sit down and cool off. Yeah. Both of you. Yeah. All I want to see around here is adults. Hi, Roy. <laughs> oh, hi, uh, Jasper Jr. Hey, Daddy, come on. We're gonna be late for maneuvers. Yeah, you're right, son. Got a hundred-mile drive ahead of us. Baker, 
If I wasn't the field marshal for junior police maneuvers today, I'd stay here and accept your apology. Uh, Jasper, could I see you in my office before you leave? Oh, sure, Chief. Now, listen, son, you go out and take everything out of my squad car and put it in her pickup. Yes, sir, Daddy. I tried to tell you when you hired him, Chief, that Baker's nothing but a troublemaker. No, Baker's not gonna do this to himself. Oh, yeah? I wouldn't be too sure about that. I look at it this way. What better way to take over a whole neighborhood than to have one of your own kind start trouble, hmm? What are you talking about? Well, look at the evidence, Roy. I mean, out of all the colors he could have put on that door, he picked bright red. That's one of their flashy colors. <laughs> Jasper, if I find out you did this, third cousin or no, I'm gonna hang your carcass out to dry. Me? Me? Whoa, there. You're playing right into their hands now, Roy. They just love to see us fighting among ourselves. Now listen, Jasper. No, you listen. I am an officer of the law. I'm sworn to defend that law, not break it. So if you think I painted that, you either charge me with it or get off my back. Y'all have a nice time. <laughs> Susie BD. Oh, yes, Mr. Slater, just a minute. Curtis, it's your real estate agent. Thank you, Clarks. Oh, Mr. Slater. Say, what? They're offering me how much? Well, who is? What do you mean you can't tell me? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think this over, and I'll get back to you. Yeah, bye. Hmm. Well, how do you like that? What is it, Curtis? Somebody just offered me $5,000 profit if I sell my house. Curtis! Dang, this is sure your lucky day. <laughs> I mean, you made all that insurance money when your apartment burned down, and now somebody's gonna make you all that money with selling your house? You sure stepped in it. <laughs> I sure did. Listen, who wants to buy it? I don't know. Slater wouldn't tell me. He said that's privileged information. Very interesting. <coughs> Lucille, can you believe this? Somebody just offered me a $5,000 profit if I sell my house. A $5,000 profit? You are looking at a potentially rich man. Now face it, Curtis. The only reason you'd be getting that money is because of your color. So what? I may have just fallen into a great new business. I just keep moving from one house to another. <laughs> $5,000 a pop, I'll be the richest black gypsy in town. Uh, Lucia, could you get these letters out right away, please? Oh, hello, Sergeant Baker. Oh, Mayor Burnside? Oh, uh, I heard about that incident at your house last night. I think it's simply revolting. Well, I appreciate your concern, sir. There are cruel and insensitive people in this world. I, too, have looked into the face of prejudice. Well, I had a similar experience once as a child at the private school I attended. Really? Yes, I was going back to my room from my post as cafeteria monitor. <laughs> when, just like you, I saw some ugly, disgraceful thing scrawled across my door. Honky? <laughs> no, we were all honkies. <laughs> Uh, Caucasian Americans. <laughs> no, what they wrote was something much worse. Mama's boy. <laughs> Never been so humiliating all my life. But well, did you ever find out who did it? No, I didn't. But my mama did. <laughs> you know, Curtis, I never let people like that bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like my mama said, they only picked on me because they're jealous. Because I'm rich, good-looking. I don't know why they picked on you. Well, let's see you now. You get those letters out right away, you hear? Handle it, handle it. Uh, listen, I have a lot of work to do. 
Oh, come on, Lucille. You're not really upset with me because I'm going to sell my house to a bunch of bigots. I mean, they're going to run out of green long before I run out of black. I don't believe you, Curtis, for $5,000. Whatever happened to pride? Whatever happened to dignity? They're going for $2,500 a piece today. <laughs> Curtis. They wrote nigger on your door. So in a few years, they will write rich nigger on my door. <laughs> hey. Hey what? Hey. <laughs> um, later, Lucy. Susie PD? Oh, hello, Miss Slater. No, Sergeant Baker. Is, oh, here he comes right now. Curtis. Curtis, it's the phone for you. It's your real estate agent again. Thank you, Curtis. Hello, Mr. Slater. Oh, well, I'm still thinking it over. How much more? Another $1,500 on top of that? That's a total of $6,500 profit. Wait, who is this big spender anyway? I mean, I, mean, I know you can't tell me. But can you get him up to 10? How about 15? Well, I'll have to consult with my financial advisor first. Yeah, I'll get back to you. Bye. Chief, what's on your mind, Baker? Chief, I just got a call from Doug Slater. I've been offered a huge profit to sell my house. You kidding? I think it has something to do with what happened last night. Oh, I don't think Doug Slater would be a party to anything like that. Chief, I'm telling you, it's starting to look like a neighborhood conspiracy. <clears throat> well, what are you going to do? Well, I tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not selling my house. Good. But you know, Baker, if they want you out of there bad enough to overpay you for your house, no telling what they'll do next, maybe I ought to sign a man to, to stake out your house tonight. In no way. I can handle it. But I, uh, was wondering if you had another cop like that. Oh, here, take that one. Here, take the TV, too. I'm moving home. I called Charlotte. Told her we ain't never gonna gamble again. Chief, you're giving me your cop and your TV? Oh, you are really burning your bridges. <laughs> Floris, I was parking Jasper's squad car like the chief told me to. Look what I found in the back seat. A can of spray paint. A can of red spray paint. So Jasper did it after all. I can't believe that. Maybe we better show this to the chief. Uh, no. No, Harley, wait, wait. Uh, no. Let's don't tell Roy or Curtis about it just yet. But this is evidence. I know that. But give me time to talk to Jasper and get his side of it. Maybe that way we can keep this whole department from blowing apart. At least I'm gonna try. Thanks a lot, chief. <sighs> all right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Be sure and get you some guinea hens now. Chief, I thought you patched things up with your wife. No, I gotta stay with you. That woman is impossible. Oh, gee, I saw that movie. That's one of them real good whodunits. That fella right there is the one who done it. Thanks a lot, Chief. I mean, I really appreciate that. Now I know why they offered me so much money for this house. This is not a house. This is a hotel and a restaurant. Chief. The next time your wife throws you out of the house, why don't you check into a motel? A motel? Are you crazy? Small town like this, oh, people think Charlotte and I weren't getting along. <laughs> well, you keep spending your nights here, and people are going to start thinking that you and I are. <laughs> now, if you're going to stay tonight, it's all right, but we're going to have a few rules. I'm not going through that mess like last night. Rule number one, no liquids after 9 o'clock. 
I mean, nothing personal, Chief, but I didn't get to sleep a wink last night. You're the only man I know who can convert one glass of water into six trips to the bathroom. Well, you think you're such a pleasure to sleep with? Half the night, you're grinding your teeth to the tune of Sweet Georgia Brown. Well, look, who's talking? The only man I know of gets in the bed and cracks the knuckles on his toes. Mrs. Baker, if I wanted to hear all this nagging, I could have slept at home. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but I got a busy day tomorrow. Let's hit the sack. Mm -hmm. Sleep, Baker. Well, I'm going to sleep in that cot. You are going to sleep on the floor. Now, do you mind? My cot. It's my house. Well, all right, you can have it. But this ain't no way to treat a guest. Hmm. Uh, I want to watch a little TV. Now, now how, Chief, how am I supposed to sleep? Well, I'll turn down the sound. Chief, how are you going to watch television without the sound? I read lips. <laughs> Besides, I've seen this movie, too. You know, Brian Donnelly, if he gets run over by a tank. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you read lips. <laughs> Night, Chief. Cloris, you should have been out there. What a day at maneuvers. You should have seen little Jasper when them right control beams just in his glory. Oh, really? Yeah, he's out in the truck now, sound asleep. Wore himself plumb out, fighting back them simulated hippie aggressors with his fire hose. <laughs> Jasper, in all the years I have known you, I have never been as disappointed in you as I am now. Oh, Cloris, don't get upset. We didn't have the water pressure on full. <laughs> that is not what I'm talking about. In spite of all the terrible things you say sometimes, I always thought that deep down you were a decent man. What in the name of Sam Hill are you talking about, Cloris? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Is this what you're looking for, Jasper? You left it in the back seat of your squad car. <laughs> Outside your front door. You open the door, and I'll cover. Jasper! I told you I knew it was him! So it was you. Jasper, you make me sick. This is not what it looks like, Roy. I was just trying to paint Baker's door back the way it was. If you hadn't done it in the first place, you wouldn't have to paint it back now. I didn't. Well, if you didn't do it, then why are you doing this? Because he did. Get on in here. <laughs> Jasper Jr.? I don't believe it. Oh, boy. As soon as I saw that uh, can of paint that fell in the back of my squad car, I knew right off it was the same color Junior used to paint his bicycle and what's on Baker's door here. So, uh, I read him his rights, interrogated him, and he gave me a clean confession. <laughs> I thought we'd clean it up, and he could apologize to you. I'm sorry. Well, Junior, you know, it's one thing to say you're sorry, and it's another thing to know what you're sorry about. I'm sorry I wrote that bad word in your door. Now, you must really hate me an awful lot to do something like that. I don't hate you. Well, then why did you do it? Well, go on. Why did you do it? 
He ain't gonna tell us. I've been asking him that all the way over here. Now you get on home and you wait for me in the garage. I'm gonna tan your hide. Daddy, I only did it because I thought you'd like me to. Don't know where you'd ever get an idea like that. <laughs> Jasper, I know where he gets the idea. He gets it from home. You're right, Roy. I'm gonna go straight home and have a good talk with his mother. <laughs> Jasper, if you're looking to blame someone, when you get home, take a good look in the mirror. You know what I'd see if I looked in that mirror, Baker? I'd see an officer of the law who has always kept the first rule of police work. Never accuse a man of a crime unless you got the evidence. I wonder how many other police officers in this room would see the same thing if they was to look in their mirrors. <laughs>